Good day everyone and welcome back to another installation of Medical Bites on the Turo University YouTube channel. Our uh, subject today is going to be the nose and sinus exam combined. Previous posting on this channel of video that just focused on the nose exam omitted information for the sinus exam and many questions were asked and so we're going to elucidate this just a bit more. I know this is pretty small print on this, but you'll be getting this handout during the lab. And it goes through the head exam where you palpate the scalp thoroughly, the ear exam, which we've already demonstrated in the how-to ear exam, and then the nose exam. In this video, we're gonna focus on this, which is then gonna have the otoscopic exam of the nose with a nasal speculum. You can use a large ear speculum to do this exam. Identify the septum, the nasal passage, the middle and inferior turbinates. Then once you're done with the nasal exam on the interior, then you go to palpate the frontal sinus for tenderness above the medial brow, left and right, bilaterally and simultaneously, and then palpate the and percuss the maxillary sinus bilaterally and simultaneously. You can also palpate percuss these structures as a therapeutic and this would be covered in OMM with petrissage and effluage but that is not a subject for this presentation. We want to remember that when we start doing our examination we want to assess for the external nasal structures first to make sure that they are bilateral and symmetrical looking at the apex of the nose, the ala nasi, the anterior nares, the nasal septum, the bridge of the nose, and so forth. All of these structures should be bilateral and symmetric with concerns for deviated nasal septum or inflammation underlying evident on physical exam. The examination, remember we're using the grip mnemonic of GREET rapport, introduce, identify, explain the procedure, and ensure privacy, making sure that you wash your hands in front of the patient prior to doing the exams. In this situation, we discussed doing the nasal exam with the equipment of the otoscope, with the otoscope speculum that we used for the ear exam, and then for the thaticum speculum that we also used during the previous nasal exam video. Remember to position the patient at the same level as you and to assess both sides of the nares. The exam then, you turn on the light on the otoscope, grip it like a pencil, exam both sides of the nose, utilize your dominant hand for stability. When you do the exam, I call it making a piggy nose, but you want to gentle pressure on the apex of the nose, superiorly and posteriorly, to make examination of the nares easier. First of all, before you look through the scope, you're going to look in the anterior nares for any obvious abnormalities. Then with inserting the speculum into the nares, you're going to deliberately and systematically inspect the roof of the nose and along the floor of the nose with the otoscope. Examine those turbinates. Always make sure that you go from the ears to the nose for infection control concerns. The image of the examination then with the slight piggy nose of examining the superficial nares with the inferior terminate and nasal septum visualized once the speculum has been inserted inside of the nose. Note on the image with the nasal septum and inferior turbinate labeled you'll notice that you have good visualization of the inferior and middle turbinates. On the other image with the dots, you'll note that the nasal septum and the inferior turbinate are markedly inflamed, not allowing for good visualization of the middle turbinate or other nasal structures. In this image, we are looking at with the thaticum speculum, what a normal examination would look like with the thaticum speculum, a moderate obstruction, a severe obstruction, or a total obstruction 
of the nares on the left hand side for these patients. Some patients do need imaging studies performed when we're thinking about if they have acute sinusitis or other nasal concern. In these situations, we use what's called a water's view, which emits the ionizing radiation at a angle to allow for better visualization of the internal structures. Notice how the ethmoid sinus, the frontal sinus, and the maxillary sinuses are all visualized in this image. Now looking at a sinus CT, you can see that from the view labeled here that you can have the ethmoid sinus as well as the maxillary sinus, the middle and inferior turbinates visualized quite nicely. This also CT image here allows for us to see what the frontal sinuses look like and then further imaging in the axial view, correction of the coronal view of the maxillary sinus, the sphenoid sinus, and you'll notice that in the sphenoid sinuses you can actually see a mucosal thickening indicative of either acute or possibly chronic sinusitis. In this image, the maxillary sinuses with the waters view on the image on your right hand side of the screen demonstrates an air fluid level with a contour of the maxillary sinuses highlighted. Notice that the air above and the fluid below. This would be an acute sinusitis because there is no mucosal thickening. Here is a CT view of the maxillary and ethmoid sinuses again with the radiologist sign demonstrating the inflammation and the sinusitis on this patient's right hand side. A deviated septum that can be seen on examination and one of the reasons that we want to make sure that we do a careful examination of the external nares. Note the image on the first image with the deviated nasal septum and then the corrected nasal septum following a septoplasty. The image of the CT exam gives a very vivid picture of the deviated nasal septum. When we're doing our exam then, once we've done the internal nasal exam with our speculum and otoscope, we want to then remember where the position of our frontal and maxillary sinuses are. These paranasal sinuses may be exquisitely tender during sinusitis. Again, the sphenoid sinus is deep to the ethmoid sinuses. The ethmoid sinuses are sometimes referred to as the ethmoid air cells. Serous drainage from the nose is described as rhinorrhea. When we are palpating these sinuses, pressure can be exerted medially and superiorly at the base slash root of the nose for the frontal sinuses and then superiorly just below the zygomatic to produce pain and tenderness due to the increased pressure within the sinus during sinusitis. You can also percuss. Notice that we are percussing above the eye bilaterally and then also with the eye below the eye bilaterally for the frontal and maxillary sinuses respectively. We will now review in a quick video vignette the actual procedure for doing the nasal exam incorporating our sinus exam. So for our nasal exam, we've already used the grip mnemonic for remembering how to introduce ourselves, to greet the patient, to establish rapport, to describe our procedure, and to provide real privacy, of course. I've already washed my hands and introduced myself to the patient. I'm then going to use my otoscope with my largest ear speculum that I can utilize. Notice on my otoscope I have my ability to adjust for focus. Most of the time you won't have to do this when you're doing your nasal exam. You will hold the otoscope like a pencil 
gently take your thumb against the patient's nose, and in the video, remember, I called it doing the piggy nose. Then I'm going to demonstrate across on the side towards you guys. I'm going to look at the nose structures with a little bit of light, making sure that superficially I have symmetrical structures. There's no swelling. There's no de deviated nasal septum. When I bring the nose into the piggy nose, I can then look for superficial obstructions. The speculum then is placed inside the nares, and notice I'm able to push upward on the nasal speculum against my thumb, not actually pressing against the patient's nose itself. I tell them to take a breath because if they breathe their nose while I'm doing this exam, it's going to fog my lens. So go ahead and take a breath and hold your breath for a second. I can then observe the inferior turbinate and the middle turbinate. I would then do this, of course, on the opposite side to be able to investigate both sides of the nares. Once I'm done with that examination, I can then go ahead and palpate the sinuses. I will first palpate, if you notice, just superior to the eyes on both sides for the frontal sinuses, and then I will palpate on both sides just below the eyes on the maxillary, on the zygomatic arches, just pressing inward and upward. And if there was, was tender, then that would be one of my signs for uh, sinusitis. You can also percuss by gently tapping over the same areas that you just palpated. I would then percuss directly below the eye and directly below the eye. Some patients are rather sensitive to this, so sometimes I will cover the eye and do the tapping and cover the eye and do the tapping. Again, be nice to your patient because if they really do have sinusitis and there's a lot of pain that you don't need to percuss and to palpate. Sometimes you can do just one to get enough data. We'll be going over these techniques again with your preceptors in lab today. Thanks a lot and have a good evening.